Welcome learners to the teleconferencing session on Time, a Geological Prospective. I am Dr. Kakoli Gogoi. Along with me is Professor R. Baskar. We both are from Georgia Discipline uh, School of Sciences, IGNO. Today's session is related to the BSc courses, that is BSCG program. The course code is BGYCT137, that is stratigraphy and paleontology. So, this uh, stratigraphy and paleontology, both these branches are the oldest and the fundamental uh, geological branches that deal with the historical, geological and biological uh, event uh, of the earth. And stratigraphy, this is basically it is concerned with the systematic uh, sequences of the layered rocks that is stratified rocks and uh, this is uh, built on the concept of law, law of uh, superposition. And this law, uh, it, it uh, says that the oldest uh, layer or oldest uh, beds, uh, they are formed uh, at the bottom of the sequence and the youngest one is at the top of the sequence. And for paleontology, we study the fossils, their history, their evolution. And this paleontology, it uh, aids the stratigraphy. So, uh, study of fossils and study of paleontology, this is a geological clock uh, where uh, we get the uh, evidences of life on earth. And this geological time scale, evidence of life uh, that is related to the clock. Uh, so, uh, to discuss about the geological time scale, I will now request uh, Professor R. Barskar uh, to give the concept uh, upon the time uh, geological perspective. Unique uh, aspect of geology is the time, which distinguishes it from other disciplines. For example, uh, when compared to physics, chemistry and other subjects, geology is unique in three terms. One, concept of time, concept of, of space and complexity in natural systems. Here time is very important. When geologist looks at a rock, he does not see only the physical and chemical characteristics. He also thinks about the time dimension. It is very important for us to know that the age of the earth, if you see the clock on the TV, which is condensed, 4.6 billion years is condensed to uh, one hour, then you will see that humans itself came into existence in the last fraction of second. If you condense to 24 hours, he came in the last second. And the whole evolution took lot of time. The physical conditions were made right before life could evolve. That is why 87% of the time of the geological time scale, we did not have the evolution of life to a great extent. After that, sudden explosion of life occurred. Geological time, if you see, it is nothing but the record of the major forms of events which have occurred. And there are two or three ways in which we do these kind of things. One is we study the rocks, we do the relative dating of the rocks, then we do the absolute dating of the rocks. Based on these two plus the fossil evolution as Dr. Kakoli has rightly mentioned, we construct the geological time scale. On the basis of uh, fossils, then geological uh, time scales they are divided into uh, units, and these units are grouped together to uh, larger units. So, as Sir has already told that, like the daily clock, that is from the time, it's from second, then minutes, then hours, uh, then um, the days. Uh, uh, it is related. Uh, like the clock only, but here in geological time scale, uh, we uh, do not use uh, this absolute time in thousands of years or millions of years. We use relative time, that is uh, the time uh, on the basis of fossil content. So, uh, in geological time scale, the age is the uh, smallest unit and ages as you can see in your screen that when ages are grouped together they are called epochs then epochs and epochs are grouped together uh, to periods and periods are and grouped 
to eras and then the eon. Then uh, here you see the eon is the largest division of geological time. Likewise, uh, after eon it is era, uh, then the period, then the uh, epoch. Uh, and here uh, you can see in your screen that eons, there are uh, four eons, four division of eons, uh, the hidden eon, the archean eon, the Proterozoic Eon and the Phanerozoic Eon. Here uh, this Cambrian, Cambrian is the oldest period, oldest period of the Phanerozoic Eon. So, before Cambrian all the three eons that is Hidden Eon, Archean Eon and Proterozoic Eon, they are clubbed together to Precambrian Eon. And here uh, you can see uh, the Phanerozoic uh, Eon, it is uh, uh, divided into uh, three eras that is Paleozoic, Mesozoic and Cenozoic. Here I would like to mention that as I have already told that uh, in stratigraphy, uh, we study uh, the sequences of rock uh, according to law of superposition, where I have already told that the oldest one is at the bottom um, and the youngest one is at the top. So, likewise in geological time scale, we study it from the uh, um, from the bottom most that uh, for eras for Phanerozoic eon I am saying that it is from Paleozoic, Mesozoic then Cenozoic. So, likewise this Paleozoic is divided into six periods. They are Cambrian, Ordovician, Silurian, Devonian, Carboniferous and Permian. Uh, and the Mesozoic era, it is divided into three periods that is Triassic, Jurassic, Cretaceous and the Cenozoic is Paleogene, Neogene and Quaternary. Now, if we come uh, to the major events of this uh, eons or of this periods, here you see the Precambrian. Precambrian where uh, this is also known as uh, uh, or this is also famous for the evolution of bacteria, and the first clear evidence of life that is one cell bacteria is of the Precambrian eon. And for the Paleozoic era, we say that this is the uh, where the ancient life forms. And for the Mesozoic era, the age of reptiles. And for Cenozoic, this is the age of mammals. So for Paleozoic, you can see that the jellyfish, the trilobites, the fishes, they are dominant in the Paleozoic era. And for Mesozoic, you would be knowing that for this Triassic period, the dinosaurs are dominant. And for Jurassic, these are more dominant and in the Cretaceous, you see the uh, oldest mammals and the birds begin to replace the dinosaurs. And now we are in the Quaternary period where it is divided into two epochs, the Pleistocene and the Holocene. And Holocene is the epoch where the present climate and the only modern humans uh, are the major events. So, I have uh, talked about geological time scale is based on uh, a relative uh, time, not of absolute time. So, I would request Professor Bhaskar sir to elaborate upon the absolute age and the relative age. Uh, thank you Dr. Kakoli. You have beautifully explained the whole terms. If you see the slide on the screen, you will see two terms. One is absolute age and another is relative age. Now, what is absolute age? It is the absolute number which we find out through radioactive dating. Relative age as Dr. Kakoli has mentioned depends on a sequence of rocks. You can see relative time depends on mapping of the geological strata. It, de it depends on the lateral and vertical distribution. It also depends on the identification of fossils. In this we do not identify the rocks according to exact age but the relative sequence. Now if you see the principles of relative age, they are few of them. The first one which uh, Dr. Kakoli mentioned is the principles of superposition. Nicola Stino was the person who gave the way to find out the relative age of rocks. Before the discovery of radioactivity uh, and application in radiometric dating, these principles were golden principles and even today they are applied. Though the fact is it appears simple, but they were a big discovery. The first 
principle is principle of superposition which has already been told by Dr. Kakoli. In any case the youngest one will be at the top and the oldest one will be at the bottom in a sequence of rock deposition this is the normal flow. The second principle if you go to the next one it is principle of original horizontality. In this case whenever beds are deposited they are always deposited horizontally but sometimes you may see tilting of beds it is because after deposition the tilt has occurred due to tectonics other or other activities. The third principle you can see is principle of original lateral continuity. That means if there is a uh, erosion taking place due to a valley and uh, the rocks are connected on either side of the valley, you will find that if the erosion did not occur, they would have been continuous. That is called principle of lateral uh, continuity. Then we are also seeing the principle of cross cutting relationship. That means if there is a dike or fault which is cutting across already laid rocks, that must be the youngest one which has taken place. Then the next principle which we have is the principle of inclusions. If there is an inclusion, then obviously it must be older than the rocks which contain them. So these are the basic principles which were used when radiometric dating was not known. And they are golden principles, they are still used and they are basics to geology. Now Dr. Kakoli, I would ask uh, you whether fossils uh, play any role in the geological time scale. Fossils are referred to as uh, the remains or the traces of the earlier lives or the uh, earlier once lived uh, animals or plants. Uh, they are preserved in uh, sedimentary rocks. Uh, they are preserved in the forms of uh, bones, skeletons, uh, cells. They are uh, even their uh, activities, their behavioral activities like footprints, uh, their tracks and trails, they are preserved uh, in sedimentary rocks and by means they are also determine the relative age of the rock and the sequence of uh, this changing uh, fossils they reflect the evolution uh, over time. This principle of faunal succession is given by um, William uh, Smith and these fossils they are evolved over time and therefore in the span of time uh, they are represented by these fossils they are limited and these fossils provide a means of uh, correl correlating rocks in terms of age equivalence. Uh, here I would like to mention that uh, there are many types of uh, fossils fossils but uh, index fossil which is very much important in a uh, geological time scale uh, where uh, this index fossils they are of wide geographic areas but within a very short period of time they exist and they have a special morphological characters uh, where their uh, their hard parts are are preserved as you can see in this slide the index fossil for um, you see the trilobites trilobites they have a geological period from cambrian period to permian period so trilobites are said to be the uh, index fossil of the paleozoic era likewise for mesozoic era the ammonites they are the index fossils. Now talking about uh, fossils, uh, you see a term that is the mass extinction. It is referred as an extinction of a large number of plants or animals from any time period. This is known as mass extinction and there are many mass extinction like um, Cretaceous tertiary extinction, then even Triassic Jurassic extinction where large number of vertebrates they extinct and they have given rise to uh, florize these dinosaurs dinosaurs and there are also extinction uh, of this Permian and Triassic extinction these are uh, all about the extinction a uh, mass extinction now Dr. Kakoli you have uh, rightly explained uh, very nicely how fossils play an important role you also talked about mass extinctions just the learners are now clear about relative dating and the fossils now the question comes what is absolute dating Absolute dating is dependent on the discovery of radioactivity and uh, in 1905 Rutherford applied it and not before uh, 1956 we knew the exact age of the rock. For example, now we know after this application of uh, absolute dating method it is 4.55 billion years and it is not yet debated or discussed because this is confirmed age. If you go to the next slide you can see 
the uh, radioactive decay takes place on a particular principle and it de doesn't depend upon external conditions. There is a parent rock and there is a daughter uh, product. And the decay from parent to daughter is a constant uh, factor and there is a term which is called, if you see the next slide, which is called the half-life. Half-life is the time taken for uh, the amount of parent to be reduced by half. Suppose you know the half-life, you know the original parent amount, you know the daughter amount uh, which is produced, the amount of daughter uh, product, then you can calculate the absolute age of the rock. In a nutshell, to know the absolute age of the rock, you should know the radioactive, what are the parent atom, what is the daughter products, and how much is the one and what is the half-life. If you know this, you can calculate. If you go to the next slide, you can see radiometric dating methods are there. It is very important that during this dating, no material is added or removed. For example, groundwater can add or remove. Sometimes if you have potassium argon dating, argon is a gas and can escape. These factors has to be taken. In other words, it should be a pristine rock. If you go to the next one, you will see different isotopes. Most important is uranium lead. Then there are other short-lived isotopes. Then there are long-lived isotopes. You can choose based on the time interval you want to date. Uh, there can be error if there is addition or removal. I said the conditions can be that due to you should uh, take care while selecting the mineral or rock to be dated. Before going to the next slide, I yeah. would like to uh, ask uh, you that uh, nowadays there are uh, in the news about the Anthropocene Epoch. Okay. Uh, uh, what is about that? Okay. This uh, got news in the year 2000 and the person who gave uh, this term was uh, Paul Crudson and he said Holocene epoch is over and now a new epoch Anthropocene has begun. Anthropocene means man has become a geological agent and he has started influencing the climate, the biosphere, the atmosphere, oceans etc. His impact is greatly visible and what is more important in the whole uh, concept is that where to identify the line where it is there. If you see my next slide you can see we have taken 1950s as the the favored uh, boundary because of the fallout of radioactive radionuclides because of atomic bomb testing. So this is a new concept it is still not accepted but uh, once it is done then we may have a new though now for example we have a megalian age but this uh, uh, anthropocene epoch uh, may start uh, once the commission approves it. It is in majority of the scientists favor it. It is yet to be formally announced. Thank you Dr. Kakoli. Thank you.